So for our last question, Mike, we're going to dig into our, uh, I guess, virtual email bag. And uh, I, th I think the question we have today is timely, given that many people across the country are heading back into offices and factories. And it involves the safety of the air that circulates around these buildings. Rahel writes, I had a question about building safety and ventilation. We talk a lot about masks, but what about ventilation? Should elevator doors remain open when elevators are idle to improve air circ circulation? What about offices with windows? Should they have fans blowing air from outside? Well, thank you, Rahel, for that uh, very good question. You'll have a book on its way to you uh, this next week for uh, helping us with the podcast today. Uh, this is an important question, a critical question. Uh, as um, uh, I think we've seen with the protests, uh, the relative lack of increased cases occurring despite the crowds, the close nature of their involvement, uh, et cetera, it points out the importance of air, in this case, outdoor air, and how it likely dissipated the risk by dissipating the virus. When we're indoors, that's a very different situation, and that indoors can occur either because of the need for heat or indoors because of the need for cold. So uh, as much as we think of the heating season and flu, uh, even the air conditioning season can, can cause us to be in a, a indoor area where air is being recirculated. So this is a very important question. I think it's uh, the source of where much of the transmission for SARS-CoV-2 is actually occurring. Um, I'm very happy to report that there is a really very thoughtful, comprehensive paper uh, just recently published called How Can Airborne Transmission of COVID-19 Indoors Be Minimized? And it's put together by a group of 35 leading experts led by Lydia Moraska, who Lydia from Australia is one of the members of our expert group that I just talked about a few minutes ago, uh, a brilliant, brilliant researcher. And then this group that she brought together here, a number of other ones who are on our, our expert advisory group are also co-authors. We will put this paper on our website. It is open access. It's published in the journal Environment International. And I think it will answer many of the questions that you've raised today. You'll want to share this paper with the building manager or those who are responsible for the HVAC system in the area that you are working or otherwise uh, spending time in. Uh, I think it will go a long ways to helping reduce the risk of COVID-19 uh, uh, indoors. And um, uh, I welcome all of you to take a look at it and, uh, and share it very, very widely. I think it could be a very important uh, a piece for the HVAC community to be aware of.